Uh, greetings and welcome. So this is part two of my video, uh, proving that NOAA could repopulate the entire planet and get it the population 8 billion in just 4,370 years. Um, so if you haven't seen part one of the video, you might want to do that just to get a, you know, just to get some background information. So in part two, I'm going to present my hypothesis and of why, you know, like what, what most likely took place in the early days and how the population was able to increase to what it is currently. So, um, so the first, so this is my hypothesis mainly. So, um, in the early days after the flood, you had Noah, you had his three sons, you know, all of their wives and they, they easily repopulated the planet. Um, the birth rates were incredibly high and the death rates were very low. And I believe this probably happened at least until the construction of the Tower of Babel. Maybe this is when people started warring and, you know, dispersing and stuff. But I would say for the first 200 to 500 years, um, I don't, you know, it's hard to say the exact number. Uh, there was probably hyper growth, very, very fast growth, high birth rates, low death rates. Um, and so, yeah, humanity experienced fast growth because of the environment. The environment was hospitable. Few deaths resulted from wars, famine, and disease. War, the war, uh, water and air quality was probably still really good. And then at the time, humans had long lifespans. Uh, there were a lot of resources. Yeah, resources were not an issue. So, so it is true they had long lifespans because right after the flood, you had Noah who lived super long. Uh, all of his sons lived really long. And every generation, they lived less and less. But the first few generations, they were living a long time. So there was plenty of time for them to have kids and uh, lots of kids. And there were probably several generations living on the planet at the same time. Like, like these days, you might have like three generations, right? You might have like your parents and your grandparents. Uh, in the, these first few hundred years, you could have easily see your great grandparents, great great grandparents and, you know, and the like. And like Noah lived for like another 350 years after the flood. So... Um, yeah, totally doable, uh, to, you know, to see all of that. And uh, what I'm also saying is that the water and the air quality was still good because this was right after the flood. So there wasn't a lot of disease and infestation because the population was still really small. So they weren't fighting. It wasn't a zero sum game. Um, they were able to, you know, everybody was able to get the land they wanted and they didn't have to fight and for resources. So the pop so they had lots of free time. Uh, they weren't really getting in each other's way. You know, the population wasn't in the millions yet. And people, like I said, people weren't fighting over resources. The water and the water hadn't been contaminated yet, you know, with poor hygiene and all of that. Plus, you have to think about it. Like, this is Noah's generation. They came back from before the flood. Um, they, they probably had some knowledge. They probably knew that you should wash your hands with running water. Europeans in the 1800s still didn't know you should wash your hands with running water. Disease was rampant throughout history just because people didn't know how dis pe people didn't wash their hands. I'm, I'm serious. I think that might be like the number one killer throughout history is people not washing their hands. And just poor sanitation has probably killed more people than than I can even imagine. It's like, it's, it's a, that, that's probably the number one killer throughout human history is poor sanitation. These people did not have that problem. These people were smart. They were intelligent. They came from before the flood. So that knowledge was eventually lost, obviously. But these early generations, they were not stupid people. These were not Neanderthals or, uh, you know, like cavemen, like, you know, evolution would like you to believe. Um, yeah, sure. They didn't have modern technology like we did. And they lived a very simple lifestyle. But um, I don't think they had, the, they didn't have these sanitation issues. So I like to say is that disease, famine, and wars were not an issue. So death rates were very low. Uh, you know, probably probably like today, you know, death rates were not that high. And but birth rates were high. Birth rates were very high. Um, in fact, that's my next point. If you look at the Genesis 10 genealogy, the genealogy from Genesis chapter 10, uh, Japheth had seven sons, Ham had four sons, Shem had five sons. That's 16 sons. So between the Three families, they had 16 sons. That's, that's over five. That's like 5.3. That's already a lot. Okay, first of all, now you have to think about this. This is sons. You cannot repopulate the planet with just sons. You need daughters. You need daughters. So 
So genealogies generally don't mention the girls, and they didn't in this case. So girls are not mentioned in the genealogy. This is very common in the Bible. Girls are usually mentioned in genealogies if they're very important. Um, generally, they're, they're not mentioned in the genealogy. So if they had 16 sons, my, my only guess, like, you know, it's kind of be, going to be hard to balance this, but they must have had daughters. It doesn't say it, but they obviously did because otherwise they would not be able to repopulate the planet. So now my guess, like a worst case scenario, maybe they had like eight daughters between the three of them. Maybe. I'm guessing, like, I'm just going to say it's probably more like it's balanced. They probably had like 16 daughters. Now, if it was perfectly balanced and they had, you know, about the same number of sons and daughters, that would be 32 kids. That would be 32 kids between the three families. So in the worst case scenario, they had like 24 kids and a very big gender, gender imbalance with like twice as many sons as, as daughters. And in the best case scenario, they had like 16 of each and who knows who, potentially they might have had even more daughters than sons but you know i don't know so using this math we're talking minimum eight kids a family but probably more like 10. i'm gonna guess more like 10 kids a family is probably what happened we're, we're talking like 30 kids between the two you know balance between sons and daughters now if there was a gender imbalance and there were a lot more sons than daughters or for example then that gender imbalance would get fixed within maybe a generation or two because you know um you you know one of the younger kids would end up waiting for mary yeah, it would be weird you know they're probably marrying their aunts and uncles or something or or nephews it was probably a little weird you know at the time i mean that's probably what they were having like by our standards it'd be really weird you know we'd call it incest uh, but yeah, people are probably marrying their cousins because there really wasn't, you know, that, that's a, that's pretty much how it was. There wasn't any other choice. So, but basically just the argument is they, these first, these three women had at least probably, probably about 10 kids of family. So birth rates were incredibly high early on. Now, I'm not saying it continued like this, you know, that they continually had 10 kids of family. Otherwise, the the world, the world would be populated a long time ago, like over way overpopulated. Uh, but it was high. We're talking seven kids, eight a family, seven to eight kids per family was completely normal for hundreds of years, like at least. Now, this is just some some math I did is sort of a, like a joke. This isn't something you should take too seriously. But let's say it took them 20 years to get to a population of 38. So let's say there were six adults. So the three families, we're going to exclude Noah and his wife. We're just looking at one generation. Noah's three sons and their wives, six adults, plus 32 children, ideal scenario. That's 38 people. In so let's say it took them 20 years to have those kids. But let's say, like just for example, let's say it took about 20 years. Uh, okay, that's 38 from six. Now, what was the growth rate to go from six to 38 over the course of those 20 years. The growth rate was about 9.23%. That is ridiculous. Like the, the, this right here, if you watch the previous video where I ranted for a bit about how you cannot backdate exponential model, you really like, like you know, like you, you can't just try to make short-term estimations. This is why, because the growth rate for those first few years was this high, it was 9%. Obviously, you do not maintain a 9% growth rate forever. Like, that would be ridiculous. Like, if you, if you look at it currently, right now we're having growth rates of like 1%, and that's still really high. Like, 2% is ridiculous in the late 60s. So, in these first few years, you know, first 20 up to maybe the, even the first 100 years, you were having ridiculously high percentage growth rates. Uh, like 9%, 8%, like ridiculous. Like the, you do not maintain these percentage, like high rates. Anyway, so th this is this is why I was uh, like, this is, uh, this is why what I was talking about on the previous video and I was talking about how the, that one guy made a video that didn't make any sense because he didn't un no understand any math. This is what I'm talking about because he did not understand this. Um, now, what if you did maintain this percentage growth rate for, for, for the last 4,000 years? This is how many people we would have on the planet right now. Okay, I don't know that, that that's that's a lot of people. Like that that would fill up like the, the entire solar system of people. Like I don't even know. I don't know if that would fill up the entire universe, but 
that's really big. That's way more than um, how many cells you have in your entire body. That is how many people we would have on the planet if every woman was having 10 kids a family for the last 4,000 years and we had low uh, death rates. That is how many people we'd have on the planet. Now, in eternity, we might eventually have that many people. But right now, that the, yeah, we would not be able to handle that many people on Earth. Um, so anyway, so that was more like kind of a just to kind of just just for any extra information. Now, let me get back onto the main topic. Um, now, ten kids is a lot per family, like a lot. So early families, like the first few couple hundred years, seven eight kids easily. That's how many they had. What is replacement level? Replacement level is 2.1 children per family. That, that is replacement level. Um, because if you just think about it logically, um, a man and a woman have a family. One day they're gonna die. To replace themselves, they need to have two kids, right? They need to have two kids to replace themselves. So if you're averaging a little over two kids, you're fine, population breaks even. Now, why is it 2.1? Uh, the reason they say 2.1 is because some people just don't, like, you know, infant mortality, some people die before they have kids. That's basically it. So the point one takes into consideration accidents and some people just not live into adulthood. So 2.1, you know, every 10th family has a third kid. Now, this is replacement level. If this is how many kids you have per family in your country, your population will not grow. It will not budge. It'll stay even. It will not grow. In order to grow, you need to be above this number. And even a little bit above that number is huge. You have high growth rate. Like even 2.5 would be huge. 2.5 would already make a big difference. Um, so just think about what 10 would do. That's just ridiculous. So 2.1 per family, which is why uh, China's one child policy back in the 80s was deadly because they were limiting themselves to one kid a family. So they were literally cutting their population in half. It's, it's suicide. That It was like, it was ridiculous. I have no idea why they thought that was a good idea. But the one child policy literally meant that the next generation would be 50%. It would be half the size of the previous one. And you're just on a track to just destroy, you know, it was, it was, it was like the worst idea possible. So 2.1 children per family. Generation length. Now, this is a good question. Um, wh what is the length of a generation? 20 years, 30 years. Now, these days, people are having kids kind of late. If you're looking at the 50s and 60s, you know, people were having kids at 20. So if people are having kids younger and everybody else is having kids younger, then yeah, that accelerates population growth because a generation is shorter. It's like, you know, it was a little over 20 years. But right now, population growth has slowed and people are waiting longer to have kids. So I think right now, these days, it's probably more like 30. And actually, in the early days of the flood, like after the flood, uh, if you look at when people were having kids, because it does say that it was actually probably more like 30. So I'm going to I'm going to take a very conservative estimate and say that people were having kids at around 30 ish. Um, and I think this is better, a better argument to make because the early like Noah and his descendants for the first few generations, they were living a super long time. So they didn't really need to like rush to have kids, you know, so they're probably having kids at like 30, you know, so I'm going to use 30 as a generation length for this next argument that I'm going to make. So remember, so uh, that this is my hypothesis. I'm going to prove I'm going to try to prove this hypothesis uh, that. So this is going to be the, the main argument I'm going to make. So this is my main question. This is what I'm going to try to prove you using some math. Um, what was the population on earth after uh, after 300 years so 300 years after the flood now i'm going to assume about 30 years generation that'll make it very let's 10 generations so 300 years let's say for 300 years you had very good growth very fast growth um people weren't at each other's throats there was a lot of resources people weren't dying high high birth rates low death rates for 300 years the first 300 years so this is about 10 generations so for 10 generations you had hyper growth so, so we're going to start with a population of six or three families. We're going to call that generation zero. So uh, Noah's kids, you know, Ham, uh, Shem, Ham, Japheth, uh, they had, uh, you know, we're going to, and their wives, six people. We're going to exclude Noah and his wife because I'm, I'm looking at on a generational level. So one generation would be six people. Those six people, that's generation zero. 
we're going to go 10 generations from that. I'm going to show you how very the population could increase very, very quickly. Now, these calculations I'm going to do, they're not using the exponential model. This is actually more of a crude calculation. In fact, I'm actually underestimating. The numbers that I'm going to show you here are underestimates. They're probably even higher in, in reality. So, um, so I'm just going to, so let's look at the first, I'm just looking at various case scenarios, like eight kids a family, seven kids a family. Like what would happen? What would happen in these scenarios? So let's look at the first one, eight children per family. Remember, this is not an exaggeration, right? This, you know, we're looking at 10 kids a family in the first generation. It was probably like 10. So eight is not an exaggeration at all. So eight kids a family, like what would happen? So just think about it. If you have eight kids a family, that means each successive generation has four times as many people because you are like, you need to have two kids to replace you, right? If everybody has two kids, then the next generation is, is the same, right? It's equal, equal, it's, it's balanced. If the next generation, if you have eight kids, then you're producing, then your next generation is gonna be four times as populous. So if you have a million people and everybody is having eight kids a family, then your next generation, whatever, 25, 30 years from now, you're gonna have 4 million people in that next generation, which is ridiculous. So if we look at this, what happens? After your 10th generation, after this one, we're talking about generation zero. So we're going 10 generations after, uh, and you have eight kids a family, you will end up with about 6.29 million people on the planet in just 300 years easily from, from six. So you, you just went up a million fold, like your population multiplied by a million in just 300 years. It sounds ridiculous because we're in the modern mindset that people have like two kids a family, but you don't like, you just need to understand historically that was not the case. Historically, women had a ridiculous number of kids by our standards, like seven or eight kids. And these kids, and the, since the health of these people was good, they weren't dying. These people were living to adulthood and they had kids. So 6.29 million people. That's just the 10th generation. While the 10th generation was alive, the ninth generation was also alive in the eighth generation. So 6.29 is just the newest generation, but you also had people from the previous generations that were still alive. So this number is probably closer to about 8 million, maybe even 9 million, to be honest. Um, like I said, this is an underestimate. I'm un like all of this is conservative. I'm underestimating. In reality, it's the, the numbers are probably even higher. Now, if you remember in the previous video, I mentioned that in 1000 BC the population was about 50 million. So um, since since this is 300 years, I'm talking about that gives us about another thousand. It's actually a thousand and fifty. So that gives us another thousand years to reach 50 million. So that's the question. If with a population of about 6 million or more like 8 or 9 million, it would be very easy to get to 50 million in the next 1,000 years. Uh, the growth rate for the next 1,000 years would only have to be about 0.2%. In fact, it would, it's even lower. It's like 0.15%. Now, if you want to understand it, are these numbers good or bad, um, watch my previous video. I, call, I talk about these percentage growth rates. But yeah, this is super low. By historical centers, it's super low. This, this would not be hard at all. So now I personally think this is an exaggeration. Uh, ex like, I don't think this is what happened. If, if this did happen, this is 6 million people. That's crazy. I, I, I think that it was more like seven or six kids a family, but potentially this could have happened too. This, this is sort of like a high estimate. Now, something else I want to mention, I couldn't, I couldn't find a good time to say this in the previous video. So I thought I'd just mention it now. I'm going to go a little off topic again. Um, so high death rates, now this is just an interesting point. It's a, maybe a little bit counterintuitive, but um, yeah, you have to kind of think about this and the implications of it. Um, high death rates only have a large impact, uh, uh, wait, uh, a large negative impact, uh, typo. Uh, they only have a large negative impact on population if the deaths occur before someone can have kids. So. This is very interesting because if you listen to uh, historians and evolutionists, they'll talk about how in the old days, the uh, mean age was so low. Oh, the average age was only like 30. People were dying so young, 30 or something like some super low number. And it sounds very convincing, like, oh, wow, well, yeah, this is why people couldn't have high, you know, high growth, the high uh, 
why the population could increase because people were dying so young, right? Um, no, it's 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 a the argument that they use. It's uh, very deceptive, actually, because it, you know you have to kind of think a little bit. It, it sounds very convincing, but it actually isn't. If you if you actually think about it. So the reason why this happened was because infant mortality was so high. So you had a lot of outliers, like you had, you know, babies dying at zero, one years old. They're looking at the mean age. When you have a lot of outliers, mean is not a good indicator of the truth. You need the median age. They never tell you the median age. They always look for the mean age. Mean is susceptible to outliers. Any statistician will tell you that. Um, there are plenty of examples where mean is not a good indicator. You don't look at the average or the mean. You look at the median. Median is a much better indicator. But they never tell you the median age. I don't know if they know what the median age is, but the median age is probably a bit higher than the mean age. So that's, that's the first argument against that is because they're kind of lying with the data here. The second issue is if you have what I wrote here, if you have kids if you have if you have like if you have all the kids you would ever have and then you die then it doesn't matter like population wise it doesn't matter too much when you ended up dying if the if the average age is 30 uh there's it's like basically if if people are having kids on average at like 25 then it doesn't really matter if the mean age is 30 or if it's 50 the population will be affected if it's lower, but not as much as you would think. The main thing is, are people having kids before they die? That's the main th thing here. If people are having a bunch of kids before they die, then it, it, population-wise, it actually doesn't matter as much. I mean, it's kind of a weird way to look at it. But um, anyway, just, just think about that. It's not an intuitive idea, but this, I just wanted to throw that out there because this is a common argument that evolutionists and historians will use about, you know, how oh, people died really young back then. The truth is they weren't really dying as young as you think they were dying. Like that's that's just the truth. It's just how they skew the data. So anyway, I just thought that I'd get that out of the way. Uh, let's move on. So that's eight kids of family. Let's go for seven kids of family. Now, if you have seven kids of family, then every generation has is going to have three and a half times as many people. So your 10th generation is going to have 1.66 million people plus. In reality, if we're talking about everybody that is currently alive, it's probably more like 2 million, if not more. Um, yeah, it's going to add maybe a couple, maybe an extra 30, 40% of the population if you add in the 9th and 8th generation and before that. Um, and the percentage growth rate for the next thousand years would only have to be about 0.34%, actually less, probably more like 0.3%. Very low, very low. Now, so do you see the difference? Like, let me just show you, just so you can see. The difference between having eight kids a family and having seven kids a family. It is huge. Like, this is 6.2 million versus 1.66 million. That's a fourfold increase. So the difference between eight kids and seven kids is that if they're having eight kids a family... Uh, per woman for three. This is just 300 years. This isn't like a thousands of years. This is just 300 years. If you do that for 300 years, you will have four times as many people on the planet as if you had seven kids of family. And you think like, what's the big difference between seven kids and eight kids? It's huge. The difference between seven kids and eight kids is a huge difference after 300 years. It's a fourfold increase. That is that is huge. So just just showing you exponential model is very sensitive to small changes which is why it's so easy to explain why it only takes 4,000 years to go from eight to 8 billion people. It's not that hard. Um, so that's seven kids. Let's look at six kids. So if you have six kids a family, um, that's tripling. You're tripling your population with every generation. Um, so it's, it's, not, it's not that much. It's actually 350,000, which would be a good sized city. After 300 years, 350,000, compare that to 1.66 uh, million. So uh, now, and this is just the 10th generation. So in reality, you'd have maybe like 500,000. Now, so 1,000 years to reach 50 million. Uh, so the population growth, so the percentage growth rate would be like 0.5%, which is about average. Um, the average growth rate throughout history was about 0.47%. So um, this is probably the likely scenario. I would say likely. I think so. In my opinion, the most likely scenario or uh, scenario is probably either the six children, 
or the seven children. That's probably the most likely scenario. Uh, eight children seems would be kind of excessive, but still possible, still within the realm of reason. But more than likely, women were probably having seven or six kids of family with um, you know, high birth rate, low death rate. What's important is that the birth the death rates were low. That's what's important is that if the death rates are low and people are um, not dying young, they're living old enough to have kids, then this is no problem. And people were living a long time. So I'm just saying, so I just did this for the first 300 years. But like, you know, potentially this could have lasted longer, right? And you would have even higher numbers. Uh, so easy, six children, a family, five children, a family. Now I don't really, so I have five children and four children, a family. I don't think this is what happened, but even if this is what happened, you could still make it work. So if you had five children, a family for, for 300 years, so 10 generations, um, you would end up with 57, about 57,000 people in that last generation. So the, the total population might be about 70 or 80,000 with five children. So it's still huge. I mean, you remember, you're only starting with six people. You're going from six people up to something super huge. And even then, the percentage growth rate would be pretty low. Um, and then finally, my last example here. This is this is a, this like I'm pretty sure none of these actually happened, but these are like super super conservative estimates. If they were having like four children a family, then your your population's doubling, and you would have six thousand people in the latest generation. Um, but in this case, your previous generations would be a little bigger proportionately. So your total population for this case would probably be about twelve thousand. You would probably have double the number of people. This is just the last generation. If you count the parents and the grandparents and the great grandparents, then you're probably getting more like 12,000 people on the planet. Um, and you remember, you only started with six, right? You're still getting thousands more people in just 300 years. And even then, 0.9%, that is still lower than the current growth rate, still lower. So all of these are reasonable. So my main argument is that why this is possible is that um, the death rates were low in the early period for the first. So that's what, let's go back to my main hypothesis here. So for the first few hundred years uh, after the flood, death rates were very low. Conditions were good. People weren't killing each other right away, right? Eventually people started killing each other, but it didn't happen right away. Um, and initially there wasn't, they weren't, there really wasn't any to fight over stuff, but so initially super high growth rate, but eventually, eventually you start having the problems where people started dying and, you know, you had all these wars and kingdoms and all that. Right. And I understand, and populations went down and all that, but initially you had hyper growth, like super fast growth, super high growth rates. Um, when birth rates are high and death rates are low, you will be amazed at how quickly the human population grows. It grows re really fast it, under the right conditions. So anyway, that's my main point, and um, that's it. So I'll see you next time.